What a year for real estate. Everyone said it was going to die off and be the way of 2008 with massive housing price decline. As a whole, it didn't. The market in Massachusetts was a strong performer, but not all neighborhoods in Boston had the same fate. One neighborhood was down by nearly 10%. We disqualified neighborhoods that had under 20 sales. Those neighborhoods included Bay Village, Mission Hill, and the Chinatown and Leather District. It was not enough data for, well, quite frankly, good analysis. Our multi-listing service also doesn't necessarily play by the Boston neighborhood rules. Sometimes it makes sense, other times it does not. For example, the Seaport District was separated from South Boston, and the waterfront area is separated from the North End, while downtown we lumped together the financial district, theater district, as well as Midtown. Now, in 2023, the largest city in New England saw 4,887 properties closed with a median sales price of $799,000. We looked at all single family, condo, and multifamily sales in all of the neighborhoods. This means that Boston saw a 21% decrease in the amount of units sold with prices going up 3.1%. As in 2022, we sold 6,187 units for a median sales price of 775 grand. Oh, real quick, my name is Jeff Chubb, and I'm a retired investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than 1,000 houses. If you have real estate questions, then no, I am here to help. So 3.1% for the entire city of Boston, not bad, especially for a year where everyone was saying that the market was going to tank. Let's first go over the top three best performing neighborhoods in Boston. Now the third best performing neighborhood was Austin. There were 90 sales in Austin with a median sales price of $691,500. This represents an increase in sales of 4.7% while prices were up 25.9%. In 2022, we saw 86 sales in Austin for a median sales price of $549,211. Now the second best performing neighborhood in Boston for 2023 was Brighton. Brighton saw 385 units close for a median sales price of 740 grand. Now, these stats represent a whopping increase in sales of 38.5%, while prices were up 26.2%. 2022, we had 278 sales for an average sales price of $586,500. So why the huge uptick in units as well as the sales price? Brighton had two large luxury buildings hit the market in 2023. Now, the Stratus at 191 Washington Street consisted of 111 units, and the Cadence on Leo, which was located at 70 Leo Birmingham Parkway, is a 79-unit build. Now, this leads us to the number one best-performing neighborhood in Boston downtown, which for our MLS purposes included the Financial District, Theater District, as well as Midtown. It's all 115 units close for a median sales price of $1.75 million, and this represents a whopping 47% increase in the median sales price while seeing the amount of sales decrease by 22.3%. Like the Brighton market, this was deserving of some additional examination. There were also two new luxury buildings that were selling in 2023. The Parker at 55 The Grange is a 168-unit building. Meanwhile, the residence at Withrop Center, which is located at 240 Devonshire Street, is a 317 luxury unit building. Now, let's take a look at the worst performing neighborhoods in Boston. Jamaica Plain was the third worst performing neighborhood with 373 units sold for a median sales price of $735,000. Now, this represented a decrease in sales of 22%, while prices were down by 7.7%. In 2022, Jamaica Plain had 478 units close for a median sales price of $796,500. Now, I dug into data a little bit more. It's a 22% decrease in sales was not a small number. I was thinking there was a large building that was sold out in 2022, and this is what represented the big decrease in units sold. Nope, I was wrong. That is an organic 22% decrease in sales with an organic 7.7% decrease in pricing. Now, the second worst performing neighborhood was the North End, with 57 units sold at a median sales price of $775,000. This is compared to the 81 units sold 2022 with a median sales price of 850 grand. All in all, sales levels were down 29.6% while property prices were down 8.8%. Again, I felt the need to dig a little deeper and see if there were any large buildings that went up for sale in the North End in 2022. There weren't. The only thing I could possibly pinpoint were maybe a couple of lost sales if somebody slipped a unit or two into the waterfront data. Otherwise, this would all be an organic decrease in sales and pricing as well. And the biggest loser in Boston was in the West End, where we had 29 sales for a median sales price of $485,000. This is compared to the 30 sales in 2022, with a median sales price of 536 grand. Now, the low sales count always makes me second-guess the data just a little bit, especially since the bottom three 
of the actual bottom four neighborhoods were disqualified due to the lack of sales. Bay Village was technically fourth, but there were only seven units that closed in that neighborhood. Or technically, the second lowest was Chinatown in the Leather District, but we only had 19 sales. And really, what would be the worst performer was Mission Hill, but it only had 13 units closed. Now, in the description below, I'm going to provide you with all the stats, as well as the neighborhood rankings. But I saw a couple surprises that I just figured, well, I'd share. The first, it would be Mattapan as the fourth best performer with a 22.6% increase in prices. Not bad. The back bay is what I would expect. Steady Eddie at number nine with a 9.81% gain in median prices. But how about Southie eating out a 1.6%? Gain in the number 13 spot in Beacon Hill, seeing prices pull back ever so slightly with a 1% decrease in the number 17 spot. Let me know if you have any questions. You can drop me a line in the comment section below, or I invite you to reach out to me as all my contact information, it's in the description below. As always, I truly appreciate you keeping me in mind. Should you or anyone you know be thinking about buying or selling a home in 2024? Until next time.